Hi everyone, we're starting on a new topic today. Civil 3D has the powerful tool to subdivide the new development into smaller properties or blocks of land. To make a start on the parcel tool on Civil 3D, let's try to understand our uh, project. Simply we have the parcel layout provided by the client and trying just to understand the uh, location of the land. Simply, this is an area view of the land. This is the land that we subdividing. We have, as you can see, there's existing developments to both sides of this land. There's an existing road just finishes here and that road should be extended all the way to provide access to our development. There's another existing road on the other side. There's a train rail at this location here. Our job on this project to come up with a suitable layout for subdividing this land here. To start with, what we need to do, as usual, open our standard drawings. I'll need to copy this layout, which is just a group of polylines, or the polylines in red representing the larger blocks of lands to be subdivided for smaller properties. The yellow line representing the center line for the proposed roads within the project. The first thing we need to do, just to copy this layout, just select and Ctrl C for copy. I'll go to our standard drawings, the uh, template that has all our settings for bearing area, for the alignment, the direction, all of those being rearranged to suit our design. So I'll paste the layout into my file, Control V for paste. We've got the layout into our file. As you can see, those are a group of polylines. Just to make sure down the track, if you get to a stage that you need to draw this layout, you have to make sure all the polylines are fully enclosed, especially the ones are inside the development. The ones on the edges, it's better not to enclose those, just to make them end to the outer side boundary of the development. That will make it much easier when you subdivide those into smaller blocks. The outer boundary obviously has to be all enclosed polyline. To start with, we can insert a background view for the actual land that we're designing, and that will remind you and review what we've done earlier during the semester with inserting a background to our design. As I showed you a minute ago, we do have the area view for the side. So if we need to insert this view into our file, what we have to do, we go to the insert tab, attach, I'll choose the right background. This is screenshot number four. We don't have to change any of these settings here. We'll change them after we insert to our drawing. So I'll scale on the screen and you'll see in a minute how to scale it and we'll keep it without any rotation. And for the insertion points, I'll choose on the screen too. So this is our insertion point and this is our scale. I'm choosing my scale, just make it big enough so I can see what's in the background and we'll fix accurately the scale in a second. To start with, I'll measure this edge of the development just to get our scale right so our edge is 595 meters this edge here is 595 meters this edge representing this line here on the far right. so if I just draw a line over it just to make sure we get the right point from here all the way to the right edge on the image. So all what we need to scale this photo for this line to be 595 meters as we did it before. So all I have to do just select the components and go back to the home tab, choose scale. It will ask me for the pace point of that scaling. I'll choose any point on the screen, which is simply where's the point we're scaling from. Now from this point, I have two options, either to enter the scale factor or I can enter the reference. All I have to do, just type R for reference and enter will ask me what is the reference. I'm saying the reference of my scale 
that this line from this point all the way to that point to be 595. I just typed 995 here at the bottom and enter. As you can see, that will scale the entire image to be 995 for that edge there. So all what we have to do, just delete that line and insert our layout at that location. Go to that corner. I'll change the view order just by selecting the image going back to the home tab and from modify I've got the viewing order I'll send the image to the back type RE for regenerate enter or well, that will send the image to the back and the polylines to the front so I simply this is the proposed development as you can see this is the group of blocks that has to be subdivided to smaller blocks the yellow line representing the center line of the proposed roads inside the developments all our work will be within these blocks to subdivide them roughly to a similar size to these existing allotments near our project so we can just hide that for a second because now we know exactly what we're dealing with so we can just select the image and type hide objects and we start thinking of how to subdivide this allotment into smaller properties. As usual, before we go any further, let's save as a drawing. Save our work to be as a drawing rather than a template. Let's call it parcel design DWG rather than DWT. You can choose here. G, parcel design. Let's place it in the right folder. Okay. Generally speaking, to use the parcel tool on Civil 3D, we have mainly two options either by converting an existing AutoCAD object to a parcel or by drawing the parcel from a group of segments or by just using an automated process to subdivide a larger parcel to smaller blocks of land. So to start with, we have a group of objects being drawn on AutoCAD. We can start converting those first to a parcel object. To do that, it's just simply we go to the parcel the second option, create parcel from objects. We'll ask to select the object. I'll choose the larger one, which is the outer boundary, to make a new parcel mainly for the overall boundaries of the land. And enter. We'll ask me what sites. Comparing to what we've done on the raw design, site assignment for our project when we're designing parcels is very important, especially if we have within the site parcels to be subdivided, new proposed roads, corridors. It's very important that all of these items are on the same site because we need these items to communicate together. We need the block of land to have the same level of the street at the front and the same level of the existing ground at the back, for example. So we need to make sure that all the components in terms of alignments, roads, corridors, all on the same site. So let's call our site Site 1. If we are doing an actual project, it's better to name that site with the name of the land, the name of the client, any uh, suitable name that you may find. In terms of parcel style, we have a few options here. We have basic, open space, road, single family. Simply, the main two we'll be using are the property and single family. Obviously, the road parcel for the road space, which is, will be left over after we subdivide all the allotments. The space will be left over will be just for the road reserve. We can assign that as a road. If we have an open space like a reserve area, a uh, community center we can name that as an open space i'll use the property for the overall site we will assign that as a property 
and for the new subdivision within these smaller blocks of lands we will choose them as single families so for the first one we will choose as a property for the larger block of land or for, for the larger boundaries uh, the parcel style will be property we don't have to worry about the layers we will we'll use the standard layers on civil 3d in terms of the labels as you can see from the example I have for you on the student drive that most parcels are labeled with numbers so we'll choose the parcel number for now we're not going to add any labels for the segments it's a bit too early to add uh, labels for the segments because we have to design the parcels edit them make sure we get to the final design that's with the time we start adding labels otherwise if we add labels at an earlier stage that will make our design very crowded with labels which some of them are unused or irrelevant to our layouts erase the existing entities yes we need to erase these lines as soon as we convert them to parcels so i don't want to see this polyline anymore we'll delete that when it's being converted to a parcel so we'll tick the erase existing entities and we'll go okay as you can see now a parcel being created the difference this is not a polyline anymore because it does have a parcel number if I select that parcel number here that will select the entire parcel just to understand how the parcel concept works on Civil 3d I'll just draw a few random lines it will make sense in a second So to understand how the parcel concept works on Silver 3D, I've got a group of parcel segments, what we call them, on the left hand side in the blue color, similar color to the parcel that we just created here. And I've got a group of lines on the right hand side in the white color. So as you can see, these are just simply a group of AutoCAD lines. We can move them around. If I enclose that space there, there's no change. All what the software is reading, a group of lines, they've got a starting point, an ending point, direction, and a distance symbol. Whereas if I have those four parcel segments enclosed, straight away when I enclose that space, Silver 3D understood there's an enclosed space between four parcel segments. In other words, there's a property being created. So the minute we have parcel segments enclosing a space that will make a meaning for Civil 3D to assign a property name for that area and there's an area I can just measure straight away the area for that space that will give me the area it's measuring the area here in uh, acres or I can just choose the area in square meters and acres so you've got all these options regardless the point is there's a meaning for that space it's not just a space between four lines like what we have in here so for a parcel to work very important to understand that this space has to be enclosed that's why we're saying all these polylines what we had drawn before if we are going to convert them straight away to a parcel they have to be fully enclosed they can't be open otherwise this label won't appear and there's no meaning for that space as a parcel or as a property so just to delete those because we don't need them we'll go back to our project simply we just converted the outer polyline to a property and that has a number property number one as you can see here if i select how to select a parcel very important if i select the name of that parcel or the number that will straight away select the entire parcel now what we need to do is converting the smaller blocks each one of them to another property so we repeat the same process we go to parcel creating parcel from objects select all the red lines representing the boundaries of the blocks of lands we'll talk about the outcome in a second so i'm just selecting the red lines without selecting any of the yellow lines because the yellow lines representing the center line of the road they're not representing any boundaries that we need to assign as a parcel so what we've done we selected all the red lines that means now Silver 3d will look at each space 
between enclosed lines, including the outer boundary, obviously, that will be considered as a parcel. So that will look at each space of those blocks here and will be considered as a property. That's why we'll see now when we press enter, each one of those will have a number for that property. So if I go, right click enter, we'll ask the same question under what site, we'll keep it under site one. Rather than going for a property, now let's start with single families because those are smaller. So the outer one is the main property everything inside it will be considered as a single family so all each one of those will be called as a single family simply this is just to assign the site uh, the color the appearance of this parcel and what label do we need to show as we agreed we're always working we are working only with parcel numbers we'll go okay and erase existing entities okay as you can see each one of those has a number now and each one if i select any of these numbers that will select the entire boundary of that property. Okay, since we divided this to a smaller properties or single families, let's try to understand how these parcels are represented on the prospector. So just to look where these parcels are on the prospector, all we have to do, we have to go to sites. So all the parcels will live under the sites title. Under the sites, we have site number one. We have we don't have any alignments yet. We didn't assign any alignments for these yellow lines. So the alignments is empty. But under parcels, we have a group of parcels there. If I select them, that will show me a table. If I just select the title here for parcels, that will show me all the parcels information at the bottom below here. That is showing me the type of the parcel, the number, if there's any description, and the area all of those parameters on the project also another handy tool that will help us to preview each one of these parcels if i look at these parcels here if i click on them there's nothing to be shown under here so we can preview each one of these parcels separately all we have to do just click on that icon there for preview and also we have to right click on the parcels at the title here for the overall parcels and we we click on the show preview so now if i select one of these parcels that will give us a preview of that parcel we can see the parcel in 3d just by itself separately from all the other parcels like for example if i need to look at the roads number 22 if i click on that as you can see all the roads being compiled to a one parcel that will be obviously the property owned by the council or the road reserve. 